Hello, everyone, and welcome to Esporters Dominaria United Standard Split Championship. What is a split, you may ask? Well, a split's kind of like a rec league, kind of like a master class, kind of a tournament, but it's all fun. In the past month, our participants mastered Dominaria United Constructed Standard with the help of our professional coach, Arne Husenbet. They reviewed the best de decks in the meta, how to counter them, unique gameplay scenarios, and got custom deck building help from their pro coach. They also got to compete against their fellow esporters each week in scrimmages, and all of this month long of work has culminated into this final tournament for prizes. If you're interested, come check out what we've got going on. Come join one of our upcoming splits. Each split gets four weeks of coaching, in pod play, scrimmages, <clears throat> unique deck building help, sometimes drafting if you're in a limited split, uh, and office hours for individual replay reviews and, and more deck techs. Uh, and it all culminates in this final cash or tournament for prizes. So let's take a peek at today's competitors and check out some of the decks that they've built for today's competition. So after the round robin stage, we see Peacemaker taking the first seat as well as uh, Mike and Matteo duking uh, it out <clears throat> to take him on in the semifinals. So let's take a peek at Matteo's deck. So Matteo is running an Esper mid-range type deck. We've got Denik, Resolute Reinforcements, Adeline. Oh, it's actually more of an Esper go-wide type of strategy. It looks a little bit like Kaido, Wandering Emperor, really standard uh, format all-stars. Um, good suite of removal, make disappear, surprisingly effective against many, many decks in the format. Uh, board wipes and a couple of different ways to go wide. So Matteo is going to be taking on uh, Mike, who is the blue red tempo deck. This is going to be a fun matchup. We've got suspicious stowaways, haughty gins, Telerian terrors, and a whole bunch of spells to turbo him out early. Um, lots of ways to protect your guys and, and essentially deal with opponents threats while hopefully uh, getting through with a whole bunch of unblockable damage, as well as a big, beefy haughty gin uh so super excited to see these two guys duke it out um where it's gonna be double elimination today so we are gonna have a winners and a losers bracket and uh we're gonna get you started with their gameplay pretty shortly um and then the last deck the, the deck that won the round robin stage uh and is sitting in first place currently is a black red sacrifice deck it looks like we got blood ties tithe harvesters we got tenacious underdogs shouldred it looks like shouldred has made an appearance in all our two of the three decks that we're seeing here today a good suite of removal here uh from the uh black red deck from the boy wheat um, do we have ever have ways to kick the, uh, the Urborg repossession? It looks like we do in the four Zeotoras proving grounds, and then a sideboard to help deal with threats that his opponents may be putting out to get after him. Oh, it's the R it's the red black sack deck with the Onikon anvil and a bunch of good artifact synergies and enchantment synergies here. So excited to see how these play against one another. <clears throat> looks like we're going to have a really fun tournament here today. Uh, and we will be diving into their matches ever so shortly. All right, and we're heading into our first match here with Matteo going up against Mike. We're going to get a quick look at Mike's uh, hand here, and he has a snap keep for three lands and a couple of good spells to start him out. Haughty Jin's opening hand is going to be really powerful. Turn one consider. He doesn't like the spell pierce, even though it would be particularly effective against Matteo's starting hand. Now, this is an open deck list tournament, so the competitors do know what their opponents are running in the first game. So definitely uh, interesting considerations to make um, when you are in the first game and you know what you need to be playing around from uh, your opponent. It's going to be an interesting matchup because if uh, Mike goes for, I was going to say, if he goes for getting out the haughty gin early, you know, um, Matteo doesn't have a great way to deal with it. 
think he's planning on flashing in one of these resolute reinforcements on the subsequent turns. Bit of a staring match here as each player concerned about the counter spells from their opponent. Nothing scarier than open mana <laughs> from a blue deck. My Mike here electing not to play with fire, the resolute reinforcements. I think that is a reasonable decision. I do like getting at a wedding uh, announcement here too. Oh, interesting. Mike goes with the play with fire to the face. I, I think if I had been in uh, Matias' situation right there, yeah, it's tough, right? You're playing your wedding announcement into potential counter spells. I think with the, the ability to double attack there, I am interested in drawing that card. Um, but holding up the make disappear here is pretty important um, to be able to, to counter this haughty gin. You almost certainly want to and, and toss your soldier token. But little does Matteo know that, oh, I was going to say the absolute blowout from uh, the negate in Mike's hand. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe a bit of a misplay here from Mike. I think negating that make disappear to, oh, well, oh, he only would have been able to negate one of them. He only would have been able to negate one of them because there was the copy. So yeah, yeah, he had to eat that on the hottie gym. That makes sense. Because it's not compounding that they have to pay two more. It's actually copying the spell. So if you negate, you only get to get either the copy or the original. All right, see the haughty gin landing here from Mike. Matteo still pushing back with all his might. The negate coming out to get rid of the wedding announcement. I think that's a pretty important glue piece for Mike to get rid of here if he wants to win this matchup. Who the suspicious stowaway is a very good draw. It's going to be able to do some damage to Kaido. I think if he, hmm, yeah, he can't get it to five just yet i'm actually not sure what the card is on his bottom left i don't think he's able to get the gin up to five before this attack so he's not going to be able to totally kill kaido but he is able to double spell and getting a fable and a, and a stowaway down he could also leave up some counter counter magic here which i think is probably what he'll choose to do that haughty gin reducing the cost of the instants and sorceries is is pretty big game when it comes to getting down a couple of with counter spells against your opponent. That was a big draw for the make disappear from Matteo here. Going to block. Looking to sneak in some damage and get additional. Uh, get to draw without having to discard there from Kaido. Danik is a, is a pretty good draw for him right now. That lifelink might help with some of the race. The racing that could happen with the Jin. Interesting choice to discard the spells versus the lands in hand. Definitely going to want to hang on to Ottawaro. Um, the non pain land is definitely preferable here over the course of the match if you're going to have access to any more discard or any more uh, discard to draw through other fables. I definitely think you want to hang on to the Shivan Reef to be able to toss it in the future. Matteo's kind of turning a corner here, uh, unless unless uh, Mike begins attacking. I think Matteo's actually going to have a bit of an edge here on the aggressive side of things. Adoraro is going to be able to bounce something. Kaido coming down. Going to be able to draw some more cards. I could also see him making the unblockable ninja and looking to push here as much as possible he does choose to draw keep getting through his deck and another land wedding announcement coming down no counter in hand from mike is going to be a pretty big painful moment that's actually could prove to be a really important uh card to stick on the battlefield against this blue red tempo deck it seems like <clears throat> Mike maybe getting to a point in his deck where that tempo might not be as impactful anymore. And, and he's got to find a way to win. He's got to, I mean, he can kill Kaido. Well, Kaido's phased out. So I do think he needs to start putting pressure on 
on Matillo if he wants to win this match. He is here able to, the reason he's attacking with, uh, with the 2-2 is because he's got to block with one of these tokens, right? He's going to be able to use Ottawa to bomb. Oh, okay. Matteo sees right through the attack. Even if Mike bounces one of these tokens, he still kills the goblin. Or Matteo still kills Mike's goblin. Good block there. Really smart to go all full block there so he doesn't get blown out. It's looking like Matteo is beginning to turn an important corner. I think that his mid-range deck might have a little bit more uh, more oomph than, than the blue-red tempo deck at this stage in the game. Oh, he picks up another Red of Oblivion. It's going to be absolutely insane against the blue-red tempo deck. Yeah, I think Mike's only opportunity is to protect this gin and to bounce it back to his hand. But little does he know that uh, Matteo has more answers in hand if he chooses to use them. Okay, he allows Mike, he, he opts to allow him to bounce back to the hand, maybe thinking that he wants to counter it later on. Hello. And shortly we will be joined by this splits pro coach, Mr. Arnie Husenbet. We will be uh, having him join us in the studio shortly as we go through the rest of this these matches. So right now we're we're seeing. Matteo really turned the corner against Mike's blue red tempo deck. And I think even that he was able to save his haughty gin was really important to having him having any chance to win. Um, but I'd like to welcome Mr. Arnie Houston, bet Arnie. Thanks for joining us today. How's your, how's your day going so far? What's up guys. Uh, I'm doing fantastic. I just had a stream going playing standard, trying out some Grixis variants and happy to hop in now with you guys. Awesome. Thanks again for joining us. So you're joining us uh, in the first round of our bracket, actually. So uh, the players have already gone through round robin. They've been given their seating. And now this is the first round of the double elimination bracket. This guy's been moving pretty quick through all everything, which is a lot of fun. And Mike does opt to concede. The Esper mid-range deck has been able to take down the blue-red tempo. So tell yeah. me about this matchup. What do you What do you think? So we're looking at Mike's blue-red tempo deck right here. Um, well, Esper is a force to be reckoned with, so no surprise that I'm coming in and just clinching a victory there. Um, no surprise, yeah. Mike has a really cool brew of his own here, taking the mono blue gin deck that's been uh, popular on the best of one ladder and also sneaking in in best of three here and there, and putting in Fable of the Mirror Breaker, mainly also then to copy the Haughty gin, which is a pretty nasty, uh, yeah, 20 damage out of nowhere combination in a late game. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you have Shivan Reef, you have Stormcuff Coast. The splash is easy to make. Um, I, I do like this deck. I think it's a pretty cool innovation of the Mono Blue archetype. And, um, yeah. I think, uh, so one of the things I'm, I'm interested in, um, it's interesting that he doesn't have any graveyard interaction in his sideboard. I think that maybe would have been a valuable, especially given how the current meta is shaking out, having something that maybe dealt a little bit between flashback and just other things that buy resources back from the graveyard. I think having access, what do you think about having access to that in your sideboard? Do you want that? And do you even want to plan around that for like a tempo deck like this that has a more proactive plan? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, we see the choice of play with fire over flame blast bolt. I think in a more controlling deck, like the is it control deck that I've been championing lately, you rather have flame blast bolt because you do beat down. You get the game over with. You're you're like sort of okay if your opponent has tenacious underdog anyways. If they do, if they're spending their mana on that to to pay life and 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 get it back from the graveyard. So yes, it's less important to have graveyard here. Hate here, nonetheless. I mean, you could still put like one or two unlicensed in the sideboard i wouldn't like hate that for the random gen reanimator it's good against corpse appraiser out of grixis mm -hmm. um so it, it's a good point but perhaps i'll talk to mike afterwards and like <laughs> let him know about that 
Um, yeah. So All right. see a snap keep here from, from Mike, snap keep from Matteo. So it looks like we've got two good hands kicking off watching from Mike's point of view. All right. Interesting. Like Matteo got his Esper Right of Oblivion token style list. That's nice. Some siphon insight also out of the sideboard, apparently. If it wasn't in the main already. But if Matteo you didn't see it in game one. Okay, I did see it in game one. All right. Yeah, um, Mike is just trying to make land drops, find one of his threats, probably taking the Fable here. Um, maybe the Hermit, huh? Thinking about the Hermit. Yeah, I mean, Fable is uh, vulnerable to opposing counter magic, at least right now. Hermit is a bit better against that. After your opponent impulses, are you more inclined, if you're in Matteo's shoes, to... Uh... Like, all right, you know that they picked up something that they care about. Are you inclined? Well, I was, I was gonna say, um, I guess it's a moot point because he didn't actually take the fable. Uh, the thought was that if he takes the fable, um, are you, are you essentially countering whatever he plays on this turn because you know that they picked up whatever resource that they want? Likely, yeah. I think I like, I like not spell piecing here. That's a good, that's a nice play by. I think I think the spell piece is going to be really good here. Oh no, it's going to be trespasser. That's also really good. Ah, get get God. Mike's got to be really frustrated right now because he's like, oh, I got the spell piece. I got Kaito covered. I got wedding announcement covered. Ah, oh, Matteo coming with the trespasser. How many copies does he have? I, I am actually. Let me let me take a quick peek. Matteo has. Oh, he only had uh two in the in the sideboard but he, i don't think he saw i think he saw a single essence scatter in game one two in the sideboard yeah all right that's graveyard trespass is like the card against um the yeah this this deck so uh the the, the is a deck so yeah glad glad i mean i'm sure my Matthias is very happy to have it here and now we just look at a game where in terms of resources, we have five against three cards, and both have four lands in play. Yeah. Are you, see, see, it's it's so tough too because you look at that and it's like you ha absolutely have to spell pierce that, but you don't really you like so you almost can't even play this fable right now just because you need to land a counter against whatever the the four they have in their hand are are going to play next. I mean, <sighs> yeah. We, we don't like Mike doesn't know the hand of Matteo. Sure. Um, and I think Mike has to get something going here. I I would be surprised if he doesn't slam the fable onto the board. Especially with one that's a good point, right? He has one mana open, like I'm I'm looking to kind of put myself in a position where I'm can get ahead and, and fable at least is doing something for me every turn. Absolutely. Fable is, I mean, yeah, like we, I've just been saying, Mike is down on the resource game. Um, so the Fable is that card that maybe can can get him back into, which is, you know, card is just outrageously good, right? Hold on one second. Excuse All right. Me. I'm also looking over <clears throat> the deck list of Matteo. Unique mix of, of things. Two Adeline and two Rafine is an interesting split in the main deck there. All right. Yeah, I was looking at that and I was like, oh, this is a, an interesting uh combo of strategies all right because i guess you can do a lot with the the white humans that um adeline's making as far as like sacking them for copies of make disappear for casualty for right of oblivion so you kind of have a lot you can do with the bodies um but it is an interesting interesting combo it's an interesting take on this esper midrange build yeah um i think he wanted to to maximize the right of oblivion by getting those one ones going with with the Adeline and having more things to sacrifice yeah yep all right no syncopate on the one ones mike is keeping the counter for something more impactful and perhaps getting rewarded now if 
by so countering what, just right off oblivion. What do you what do you think of of firing off the the right there to get rid of the fable? How much do you when it's just the the token when it's just Kiki G and that coming out? Do you care about getting rid of it before it flips? I mean, I would have liked to see a counter there. I think, but maybe, maybe, maybe Mike being patient is the right call there. See an opportunity to pick up a hottie gin, but he does know that the right of oblivion can get flashed back from the graveyard. So maybe it's not the time for that. Well, he does have a slip out the back to protect that. It's a good point, and it costs, uh, you know, costs Matteo additional resources just to be able to flash it back, and then he's got to trash his own thing. But I think this really comes down to how many cards he has in the graveyard. If the if the gin is like a seven four or something, I, I think I might have taken that there honestly. Mm -hmm. But it looks like uh, Fable is the superior. It's like gin with slip out the back and super bait in hand. You, I mean, look at Matteo. He has so many resources. He has that siphon inside card. He has two flashback cards. He has three cards in hand. You just want to get the game over with. So mm -hmm. gin gin does that job pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, was he aware? Maybe he was aware that the essence scatter was in hand. What was that from? Like the, the siphon that inside? Was, yeah, the siphon inside. And you mm -hmm. don't get to see what card they picked. Yeah. So he was surprised yeah. by that. Mm -hmm. um, in hindsight, I guess I might be happy that that got eaten over a, a gin, though. Yeah, absolutely. Matteo desperately trying to find land drops here with that siphon inside. We see that All it right. picks up a consider. Finally, oh, a land. <laughs> he gets there. <laughs> okay, that's going to set him up to be able to hold up some counter magic and maybe cast one of his three drops as well. Oh, tossing the sl the slip out the back is interesting. Okay, decides to keep the slip out the back. I, I, oh. I, I think I, I'm definitely interested in keeping the syncopate and then it's like which other counter spell would I maybe want to keep. Um hmm. yeah, I mean I, I, I do like ditching a slip out. I think he's just looking for like gin, terror, more considers impulses. Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta say I love the pace of play these players have. Yeah, they know what they want and they're they're going for it. <laughs> This could be a pretty good turn for Matteo here, being able to flash in the Resolute Reinforcements. It's a great negate on the Kaido for Mike, though. It's putting him in good position and maybe close this out if he can get a good draw step here. Mm, absolutely. The, this is a really important draw step for Mike. He has the board presence, but is he going to able to finish this game? Okay, I guess Syncopate probably is being used here. That's it's so tough, right? Because if you're Mike, you're like, oh gosh, am I all in on on this two for two to not even have lethal next turn, <laughs> knowing they have a right of oblivion in their graveyard, and uh, with, just with no way to draw, like with you're real, you're top deck decking and praying a bit here. Yeah, I mean, knowing knowing the hand, it's a bit easier for me to make this play. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you kind of have to. You have to say if he gets too far ahead on resources, you just lose this this match. Mm. Ah, I mean that's that's pretty good. That's okay because oh, I thought we were on step two. Oh, I thought we were on step two for the fable, and I thought I was going to be able to toss him. But honestly, like okay, so now he's. He can make a copy and push through with three of them, but how how, how bad shape is he in, Scott? It, it's really close now, but mm -hmm. I think I think Matteo has enough to stabilize here. He's gonna kill the Kiki, um, and then one Goblin will get through. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. We'll see. Some good top decks from Mike, and he's back in it. Let me see what what are his outs. He does have play with fires which is face damage he does have who is fires can fires go face no it cannot 
Uh, oh, those aren't even true outs. So it looks like we're really banking on goodness. The terror, I guess. Oh, suspicious stowaway is a pretty good pickup. Yeah, it is. It, at least it will get this right of oblivion out of there. So, um, yeah. So the next top deck is a gin, and then Mike might have an opening here. <laughs> What a game. I appreciate this, is... this battle. Yeah, for real. Look at all the, how many treasures <laughs> Mike has. Oh my uh... gosh. Yeah, okay. Shieldred. But Mike is not out of it, right? He's he's totally uh, he he has four outs of probably he's probably got ten percent chance of just drawing an outright win here. He could be drawing some cards. Well, there's a gin. The gin? <laughs> the gin is a card. Oh my god, this is getting really close now. He's got the another gin? shot to draw here, too. If he finds another gin, he's he's done it, probably. Oh, another stowaway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you are totally fine with this. You get to I mean, I think I'm I'm yeah, I'm going all in at this point because you have the mana to to deal with any of the counter spells with all those treasures. Wow, did Mike somehow steal this? I am slamming the gin. It's got to come out. <laughs> yeah, he has to. He he does have to slam the gin here. It's going to force out the right of oblivion. Yeah. Yeah, but but if if you know, okay, so so Matteo is going to flash in reinforcements end of the turn, and then it forces out right next turn, but it takes his whole turn. Uh, he gets the pump. Shieldred's just death touch, not lifelink. So it's like that's unless he gets something else. If he draws air, that's that's might be game for Mike. He might be going to three here. 12 4. <laughs> yeah, I mean 12 4, yeah. Uh oh, this is tough. This is tough. Reinforcements doesn't do it. Oh, he chooses not to play reinforcements at the end of the turn. Maybe maybe a little I, fast clicking there. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Excitement got him. Mm -hmm. So the vetting announcement is on two counters. Two. So the, 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 there's, the, there are going to be two twos as well. I think what Matteo should have done is he should have played the reserve reinforcements end of turn and then definitely get an attack win with the shield red. Yeah. Um, oh, get and... an attack with the shield? Well, I guess, yeah, yeah. right? Because you have a bunch of, you're going to have five blockers. Yeah. And you want to raise. Another land of the tops. Wait a second. What, am I crazy? Oh, is this Shieldred gain two, drain two every turn? Um, so it, it gains two whenever you whenever you you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you lose two life, right? So mm -hmm. every time every time a stowaway triggers here, Mike loses two life. He, he almost needs to force the flip here and not cast a spell. I almost think you got to hold on to consider for the next turn, right? Mm, and... Yes, yes, I agree. But oh, the problem my... is, Mike is just going way too low here. Oh my god! That's what I. That's what I meant. The shield should have just attacked. Yeah, and it would have been uh, in a dire spot. But I think Matteo is winning this anyhow. I. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna try to flip the stowaways, but this resident reinforcements is lethal. Yeah, it is. Ah, <sighs> wait. Oh no no no! Spell pierce is not creatures. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, that's game because he blocks the children six in. <laughs> wow. Well played by Matteo. That was a really tough tough matchup for Mike, though. I mean, yeah, the graveyard trespasser. And then the shield read later on. Whew, but what a match. My uh, actually, interestingly enough, he should have maybe done this, or well, you know, done this in the uh upkeep before the draw steps, before the, the consider should have an in upkeep in case he got a play with fire and was able to go for lethal right there. Um small things, because it would have happened before the shield gains from the two mm. life from the draw. So you would have had an opportunity if he drew into it, but granted, you know, there I don't I don't know how well, he cited out two of them, so it would have been really small. Small chances. Um, yeah, Mike, that's a great point. But I've actually believed that he uh, cited them out all. I think I remember seeing all play with fires in the sideboard at the very end. So that's, yeah. I think Mike would have caught that. 
yeah, yeah. He, he would have he would have known if he had uh hadn't taken them out. Okay, so we're this is the the deck list that Mike was working with. Let's take a quick look at the visual view here, give you guys a better idea of what he was working with. So we, he was able to get both of the suspicious stowaways. That was a fun match to watch, guys. Thank you for when you watch this later on stream. <laughs> that was a good one to check out. Yeah, so we see, I, I do like this, but I can see as soon as he gets to turn six or turn seven, how he is going to have a tough time against those mid-range or more controlling decks. Yeah, he's he's got to win the early game, um, or at, at least keep up with your opponent, play Fable, get a Jin out, and then protect the Queen type of gameplay with, with the spell pierce to slip out the backs, cheap counter spells. Yeah. That's, it, that's what you're going for. Exactly. I'm, I 100% get that. That's... That's a pretty, pretty, uh, he didn't really have the resources to protect the gym when he landed it. But had he had, had he kept onto that, held onto that slip out the back, tossed the counter spell, there might have been a different story there because the, uh, the right of oblivion flashback was the last piece of interaction that Matteo had access to to deal with these gins. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's easy to say that in hindsight. It's, <laughs> it's hard to make that decision in the moment. Like you didn't know he was going to draw into one of the gins. Um, but yeah. fun, fun, fun deck to watch go up a battle against um, Mateo's uh, Esper kind of mid rangey deck. So talk to me about Danik. Why why is Danik in this build? Um, I mean Danik is <laughs> I mean, honestly Mateo is a little bit all over the place. I can't. I mean, he just uh, split one copy of Reckoning Bankbuster and then one copy of Spell Pierce to to get the opponent. <laughs> um, but yeah, Danik. Danik is. Denik is great. It's it's a lifelinking body that you can pump up with Rafine. It's a creature that can block like the Fable Goblin Tomes when it attacks. It it comes back from graveyard and and the the, the graveyard version is actually quite good. Like whenever mm -hmm. any card enter any creature card enters a graveyard, you get a clue. Um, so that's yep. that's a pretty good grindy element. It has a free two flyer. So Denik is just an overall fantastic card, honestly. And we see it in the meta game. We see blue white mid-range decks that rely on Denik. We see all the Esper lists play like two to three Deniks or mm -hmm. one here in the case of uh, Matteo. But Matteo has, um, to be fair, has the resolute reinforcements and make this appear um, as two drops already. So he's, he's going for a little bit of a, of a token theme. Yeah, I think... Less... I've... Yeah, I, I think no, that this is just a beautiful melding of, of strategies, right? He's got He's got a lot of the components where go wide becomes extremely powerful with the wedding announcement anthem giving you the bodies adeline reinforcements wandering emperor kaido like all of these dudes just pump out a lot of small bodies he's got a lot of the controlling elements that does a good job taking advantage of those small bodies in the make disappears in the right of oblivions like just powerful intrinsically powerful spells that i think help him control the ground and then you know if anything makes its way through he's got a couple of destroy evils he's got you know massacre and infernal grasp it is it is kind of funny um how it's like oh i kind of you want a little taste of everything <laughs> instead of just the straight up you know four or three copies of the most powerful things he's kind of trying to work in uh different texts against different opponents which i think is always a little interesting yeah um red of oblivion is the unique part here and exiling any non-land permanent is and that's powerful that's very powerful so I, I i do like seeing the utilization of of that card in this matchup yeah definitely. or in, in in esper yeah yeah i think that this is this is a really fun list um it's interesting because I think early in the format, Rafine was, well, maybe this was more dominated before Dominaria came in, that Rafine was was in a, four of in every Esper deck list. Um, but Shildred just has has become a format staple because of how, how painful she is to deal with. Yeah. All right, All right so we might be heading into the semifinals of our our next matchup which is going to be peacekeeper uh peacemaker excuse me peacemaker taking on matteo so let's take a quick peek at uh peacemaker's deck it looks like he's running the red black sack build tell me about this one arnie ah uh, red black sacrifice nice um i've been playing a lot of this deck lately and yeah this deck is quite nice now that everybody's playing make disappear in their main deck and people stay playing counter spells this deck is very good against counter spells because it's so cheap um 
So make this appear is is pretty dead very soon. All right, we're and, gonna take uh, you over to the mulligans of our competitors. Who are you tossing this one, Arnie? Oof. Um spicy one with Oberg repossession. I mean this hand is tough on the play. I think I, I think I would pass it because it's so reactive. Um you're playing against Matteo, right? You know that he's on Esper. Um yeah, I would definitely pass uh, ship this hand. So the my one consideration there is okay, you have your maybe it wasn't a single copy. You have you have a copy of Meat Hook Massacre. He's got he's got three. Um you know that you're able to kind of wipe in the mid game and then maybe like just play a bunch of your early spells all at once. Is that a consideration to keeping seven? How important do you think it is? Mm, I uh, I guess it is. Um, but I think when you're on the play, um, you really just want to have your own effects to snowball. And, you know, Mitok is good in this matchup, but you need, like, more stuff. You can't just be sitting on, on, a, on a reactive hand. You get a snowball out of control because otherwise, like letting announcement kaitos, etc., they just accumulate too much value that even like one me took is, is easily outgrinded. And here we already see a, a cool mate, a, a cool play. Two mana kept up by Matteo, and we have uh, Peacemaker has the option to play a fable, but chooses not to and just to activate the bankbuster. I like that. Playing around make disappear. I, man, Red Oblivion just being a two for one for toss, especially when it's built around, you can just be tossing these little one one tokens. It's, it's so crazy, just two or four mana to get rid of any non land permanent. So it's pretty back breaking. It's hard to deal with. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Oof. Matia with all the answers. But no land drop. That's um, it's going to fall behind here a little bit. I hope we see a blitz here. Yeah, all right. I like that. Maybe play the springs first. So you can use that on colorless. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a consideration to uh, to just double spell there? I, you could, but you can also do that with the blitz, right? Because it costs four plus two, so he has six here. Hmm. Oh, he would have had six. Yeah, correct. Yeah, but he chooses not to. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I think I would have liked the blitz because he's he's running out of gas. He just mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to do right here. Right. And Matteo, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and if if Matteo doesn't remove your underdog, then you know you never get an opportunity to keep keep sprinting. Absolutely, that's exactly what I was going to say as well. Uh, he should attack for everything, I think. Mm -hmm. Get another artifact or treasure token. Yeah, I think you're happy getting the treasure token. You can sacrifice it, make more one ones. And you're also happy trading with the two one ones because, again, there's stuff like Red of Oblivion from Matteo's side, and betting announcement will make all those one ones bigger. So I think you just want to trade there. I feel like uh, almost certainly Peacemaker's going to fire off this Eden Alive on Adeline. But mm. Matthew is holding up the counter mana here, and he should be able to pay for it, even if, yeah, he's going to be able to play for it, even if he casualties it. So it looks like that Eden Alive is going to get through on the Adeline. Yeah, I think I like sacking the underdog here, right? That that would that be a good move. Oh, I like that. That's spicy, right? Because you're still, ooh, yep. You're still leaving yeah. open the four to deal with make disappear, but now you have uh, whatever. If they want to make disappear un your underdog, sure, that's great. I'll just do it again next turn. Absolutely. I think the make disappear might get used here. It's just fine to to trade it for that yeah, free like damage kind of, and a card. Yeah, it's like keeping up. Yeah, and if you look at the, the mana situation, again, I said earlier, Rakdos is a very cheap deck, so make this appear in the late game. It's just not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Use it when you have the opportunity to actually get, yeah, like you said, save three damage, save them from drawing a card, um, and use your mana efficiently. Yeah. All right, 10 life, two Oni code Anvil. <laughs> this is going to be close, but I think 
I don't know. I mean, triple vetting announcement here is going to make things interesting, making three one ones, and uh, they turn into two twos directly. Two twos, then three threes, then four fours. <laughs> Yeah, vetting announcement is already a ridiculous cast in itself, but like if you add more vetting announcements to to it, it's just like what the heck. Uh, What's better than a bunch of wedding invitations, though? That's all I want. Is to be at a bunch of weddings. It's just too fun. <laughs> Wizards agrees and gives you <laughs> five four fours <laughs> to have fun with at the wedding. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty crazy. There, yeah, it's definitely. Uh, there's a very fast clock on Matteo here, because regardless of whether or not the, the underdogs attack it in, ooh, are you pushing with the, nah, probably not. So say, are you pushing with the artifacts, but you're just sacking them to the Oni Cold. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think um, Peacemaker's slight. oh, never mind. <laughs> He's slightly ahead, I was going to say, but then Shieldred comes off the top again. Yeah, because uh... it kind of, it, it just neutralizes the two, the game drain from each turn. Yeah, and look at that attack too. Just getting in there now because he knows <laughs> he's going to gain those extra four life from the vetting announcement, drawing two cards because two creatures attacked. So, yeah. Okay, Matteo is just rolling now. <laughs> Funny enough, too, Matteo, I believe. Yeah, Matteo was did the had the hardest time in the round robin stage, I think losing all of his matches. So I am he is really coming out guns blazing in the uh, first couple rounds of this double elimination. <laughs> that's 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 a comeback story right there. <laughs> yeah, I and do think get... this deck stacks up pretty well against the more aggressive blue red tempo and and black red if he can kind of just get to turn seven turn eight and stabilize like he's it seems like he's got a pretty substantial advantage yeah totally yeah and here we have shieldred against shieldred but peacemaker shieldred is not for long there's a right of oblivion coming in and uh, i mean against shieldred you just can't raise a shieldred it's just so difficult all right, so uh, what is he praying for? He's looking for removal off the top, but what does he even mm. have to deal with? He's got a soul transfer. That would be nice. He's got Inferno Grasp. He's got, and that's it. He's already used his, he's got three outs off the top. He doesn't steal, but the experimental synthesizer does get him too deeper. Yeah, that's uh, one of the very, very good cards Rectus Artifacts gets to play. That can really um another anvil, so he actually starts to make progress. Maybe mm -hmm. that's that's only one a turn. <laughs> one extra damage a turn. Yeah, he needs a removal. He really needs to find a removal. And he sacrifices the synthesizer here to dig deeper. What is it? A bank buster? I think that's a bank buster, yeah. Okay, I mean that works, I guess. It, it does help him continue to draw through his deck. Oh, but there's the make disappear. Getting ready because, yeah, da -da. still useful. I mean, if you got tokens to sacrifice, make disappear even in the late game can hit good stuff. Matteo not sacrificing a regular token though. Matteo's just sacrificed a four four for that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Look at that. interesting, interesting. That's like crashing footfalls for two mana over there. <laughs> yeah. Two mana make two four fours. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So is there ever going to be a cycle with three Unicode out anvils on the battlefield where, yeah, I guess over time, Peacemaker could get up enough to uh, to kill. Try to think if he can ever like win this race before a draw step occurs. But I, I mean, Peacemaker is essentially gaining free life and draining for free every turn, and, mm -hmm. and Matteo only for two. So, yeah, Peacemaker will in nine turns have <laughs> <laughs> Matteo. Yeah, you're definitely underdogging every turn to try and keep drawing, but losing that two life is also a bit scary. At least the. It, you actually lose four. So. Oh, yeah. Geez, from the drawn card. But you got, I think you have to until you find a, uh oh, until you, <laughs> uh, one, two. And I was going to say, until you find an answer for Shouldred. Mm. 
Yeah, I do agree. I think he can definitely fire one more underdog off. Matteo could minus two with the Wandering Emperor on a spirit token, but maybe that's a bit hasty. Um, he can't do it on an artifact because that can just be sacrificed in response. Mm. He could do it on the spirit to just gain two life. I don't know if that's a good play, but yeah. Anyhow. <clears throat> and it would buy him more time. Underdog post combat, perhaps playing around the Wandering Emperor there. We're not attacking. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. Trying to say, hey, I don't want my my underdog exiled. That is uh no. I was gonna say that's a potential answer for Shouldred, but it's at what seven, eight now or whatever. So he needs like a way too many blood tokens, more than he's gonna be able to create to deal with it. Yeah, so he needs four blood tokens, and that's I don't see that happening anytime soon. This might be game. Yeah, I think Peacemaker got a bit too aggressive with his tokens now, and now he's going to lose a lot. Actually, I think he's going down eight, so he'll be down to four. I don't, I don't, I don't like. You need like a farewell, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think Peacemaker was a bit aggressive. Um, I mean, he didn't know about the reinforcements and the Wandering Emperor. Those were the last two cards it's, it's, it's pretty uh like if he would have stayed back he might have well i don't know i mean this board says huge it is just like 30 power or 35 power over there mm -hmm. all right Matteo coming out guns blazing coming into the semifinals of the winner side of the bracket uh relatively unscathed so far let's see what peacemakers can do to change it up first thing i saw was snap put two soul transfer into the deck <laughs> <laughs> so we know what those are for um i mean how much do you care about this voltage surge i think that's it's pretty the voltage surge just doesn't do it for the bigger threats you don't really care about the one ones maybe gets rid of adeline uh you did see that yeah voltage surge um is yeah, you're totally right. Like you only have tokens. I mean, it can kill a planeswalker. It's not completely That's dead, true. but and can also kill Rafine and Adeline. But on the play, I I wouldn't mind cutting like one or two. It's definitely reasonable to do. Um, on the play, something like Soren might also be appealing. Soren would have been very good last game at the very mm -hmm. least, making vampires flying over, drawing cards. On the draw, it's a bit less good because uh, it can be attacked down. Yeah, it actually doesn't yep. seem like uh, Matisse has great ways to counter a lot of flying. Mm -hmm. We see Matteo making some considerations here. Does Matteo have Farewell? I don't Let's think see. so. No, looking looking at his deck list, I do not think he has no, that. he doesn't have it, no. Oh, yeah, okay. I just uh, added you to where we, we have all the, the links to all the deck lists in the brackets if you want to look at it, that Discord group. Yep, I got it. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, so no farewells in the Esper mid-range build from Matteo, even though I do think having one of those in his uh, sideboard would have been a good include. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah, farewells are like... It's 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 a bit of a narrow card, but when it's good, it's it's really good most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you're like just doing it for artifacts and you have no artifacts in your deck, and red black is so centered around a big artifact build. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's pretty off. expensive to to you know one card six man to get rid of you know three two drops is kind of tough. It's very situational. Good aggressive start from Peacemaker here. Hmm, I like it. Taking the vetting announcement with the rest, leaving cut down and destroy evil. Yeah, I mean those two just don't have the impact right now. And vetting announcement is maybe the best card in Matthias deck. <laughs> so with your current hand, if you're a peacemaker and you're looking to continue the aggression are you just blitzing the underdog here next turn 
I think that's a bit. I think I would just play a synthesizer as first things before playing a land even. Mm -hmm. um, See what you get. And then, yeah. I mean, most of your deck, yeah, the, the significant majority of your deck is castable uh, off of having the land in hand and off of the, the underdog, or excuse me, off of the um, synthesizer cast, right? Because you have the third mana in case you draw any of your three drops, so you literally have everything except, like, you can cast everything except, like, uh, Meat Hook Massacre, essentially, and uh, Shouldred. Yep. Yeah, so I think that's a good call. I mean, he chose to play Harvester. I guess he wants to play the, the Tenacious Underdog. He post combat as well. Just get on the offensive. All right. Nine power. I mean, it's scary, right? He does. Mattia has some decent counters in being able to cut down and then being able to double block the reinforcements. Hmm. Mattia perhaps getting a bit punished for that Destroy Evil. Drawing two copies already, it's 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 kind of narrow. It kills Shieldred and kills Fable, um, as the main target. So, Mattia, I wonder, I wonder how many uh, lands he was uh, running in the final build here, just because it does seem like he's run into this quite a bit. Twenty five, yeah. So that's not like egregious. That's that's kind of right in the middle of what I would expect from a mid range deck. Um, yeah. Yeah, honestly, I don't know how many more I'd really want, especially because there's not a lot of filtering in his deck. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. With Rafine, you have some ways to discard, and you have Cycle Lands. Um, I know Esper players who play 27. I think 27 is maybe a bit much, but 26 is usually the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rafine to stabilize. Oh, and he has now lost one of his removal spells that can deal with her. Yeah. Synthesizer oh. being cracked. Hoping for a land. He gets the land. Wow. Do you attack here? I think I like attacking. Just if he wants to eat your 1 1, sure. You get your free damage in. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it, right? You do want to try and push as much as possible before you can land Shieldred. Yeah, shield it again. Blood token has to be sacrificed in response. Uh, maybe a little, <clears throat> maybe a little misstep by Peacemaker there. Um, I think he needs some additional coaching. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <I'll stop. laughs> no, that's not what I'm here for. Um, I hope he can. Uh, I hope he can take that. So no, nice. no, he does. I'm sure he's fine. Uh, I, I, oh, interesting toss of the duress. Just because I think I'm interested. I, I doubt uh, that he's been, you know, hoping to get a land for the past several draws in a row. So I do think I'm interested in hanging on to that duress because they probably are sitting on gas versus lands. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, the reliquary now is also good because he drew the fable, but he didn't know yeah. that. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, this Rafine yeah, is getting out of hand. Yeah. Also gaining so much life of Shieldred. Oof, geez. I don't see how how Peacemaker gets out of this one. Matteo seems to have uh, have a lot of his late game cards set up. He's got removal to deal with everything. He doesn't have something to sack to the right of Oblivion, though. So that's that is one uh, you know pretty glaring downside for the right here in this specific situation. Yeah, but... Gets a fable. I think Matteo's got this. Yeah, I mean, he has no way to stop the ever-growing Rafine. It's like, for for... Peacemaker to get back into this, he he needs two removal spells essentially, and then there's another Shieldred coming in the hand. I mean, and he's still sitting on a a bankbuster. Just gets to be patient, draw a bunch of cards. Yeah. 
I mean, this this just makes you want to play a deck with like four shielded and then just four Phyrexian missionary or something to just get it back. You know, just <laughs> hey, I'll just play my shielded all over again and just win these games. The card is so difficult to raise. That's huge. A four five death touch. I mean. Yeah, it's huge. It fits nicely along the curve, even the aggressive decks. Like, it's just a, a really unfair card. And Peacemaker says, that's enough for me. Matteo, starting off 2-0 and in matches in the tournament so far. Congratulations, Matteo. It is great to see it. We'll take a quick peek over at the bracket in just a second. Let's see what Matteo is really dominating the whole field with today. Is an interesting Esper build here. We see that uh, the reinforcements have been a, a good all-star for him to deal with early threats from his opponents. We haven't seen much of Adeline coming out. We saw Rafine in the last matchup, but Shieldred the Apocalypse has really been the outstanding card. I mean, granted, this is all over standard right now, something that's really dominating a lot of uh, people's uh, games and, and you know, mind share. Like, how do I deal with this dang card? Um but yeah, it's just it's just a pretty solid. I think I think against the two aggressive decks, do you feel like Matteo maybe has inherently the upper hand, or how do aggressive decks normally stack up against mid range decks? And normally, I would say mid range is ahead. Um, but these two aggressive decks, they have their the different lines of attack. I mean, we have lots of counter spells which can just rid of shield rid. I mean, four drops not so good against a make disappear. Um, yep. on the one hand, and then the Rectus Artifacts deck, as we saw, I mean, I think I think the matchup is actually not that bad for Rectus Artifacts, but it's just what can you do when your opponent just has a shield rid for the entirety of the match, it feels like on the battlefield. You just can't win. Mm -hmm. So this is just a really <laughs> good reminder yet again. Um, have your spot removal, guys, and draw it, I suppose, because, I mean, we saw the four soul transfer entering the deck of, of Peacemaker, and you just didn't draw it, so, yeah. It, I think it definitely this matchup has a bit of a tough time against a bunch of the bombs that, like, oh, like, you definitely need to remove the top seven cards in excuse me, a Matias deck, right? And if you're sitting on four pieces of removal in your starting deck that you're hoping to draw into and in eating alive Infernal Grasp, two soul transfers, that really help you deal with that. You need to be either landing and attacking so soon that they are overwhelmed or you really need to get a little bit lucky. Um, mm. Let's take a quick peek That's at the point where we're going. So Peacemaker and Mike are going to be who we're moving to next to see who moves on up to the winner's bracket finals. So as we saw in round one, Mike is on a blue-red tempo deck, heavy on the instants and sorceries, four considers, four play with fires, some slip out the backs to protect his haughty gin, spell pierce. So what do you think of spell pierce? I, I, I think always, uh, I'm always interested in this just because, uh, I feel like I maybe undervalue it compared to how good it actually is. Um, I think two copies is the sweet spot. Of course, spell is a card that becomes dead in the late game, but <laughs> these days uh, it's all about the early game. Uh, snowballing in the early game is everything, really. If you if you get a, a, that advantage with like wedding announcement, fable, etc., those two cards especially, um, they just have snowballing written all over them. And spell is boom, one mana snacks them both, and uh, really catches people off guard. I mean, if uh, as we saw with the Melevant Hermit at play, if you if you just um, in, in in one of the earlier matches, if you have that one blue up, your opponent's gonna slam the wedding announcement of Fable usually, and then Spell Pierce, boom, what a blowout! Yep, yep, huge blowout. Now you can see kind of uh, the thoughts here for Mike's blue red build with suspicious stowaways is, hey, I can literally operate at instant speed for every single one of my spells, so I'm able to. Uh, essentially play land go magic against my opponents while my stowaways are flipping into an unblockable two one that draws a card every time it attacks um so i totally get this i i like this build i get where it's going it's got good uh good draws with um sir match uh telerian terror one second i'm quickly getting pinged by people in the chat uh and we're heading into the next match with Peacemaker and Mike. All right, let's have them duke it out. <clears throat> All right. 
We got Onycrit Anvil hitting the battlefield here. Winning a Dyros. Winning a Dyro is really, really important uh, for if you play against Is it Jin. Like the Is it Jin deck, or at least that was the case with the Mono Blue version. It's it's so good on the play um, when you when you do have that counter spell on turn two on the ready. Um, yeah, but on draw it's a bit more difficult. Synthesizer hitting the battlefield here and hitting a blood type harvester. That is some good value. Essence Scatter probably going to hit that from Mike's side. Oh, I'm excited to see this these this uh, aggressive matchup take each other on. I think you gotta scatter this, right? Mm -hmm. You're 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 looking to keep up, and you know, in the early game, the way I think about an SS scatter is like, okay, you played on turn two against their turn three or turn two turn two or turn three play, and that's essentially a concession to like I'm trying to keep up, and then late in the game, you know, you just try and counter the most impactful spell that they could have. Um, I think that's definitely the right play here, though. Absolutely with you on that okay so i like i i love the the free uh destroy and draw from the synthesizer and the unicult anvil that's a super powerful combo allows mm -hmm. peacemaker to get a land uh off the top of this deck and he's able to hold up a surge just in case uh mike's able to draw into one of his gins mm. yeah peacemaker's got to be feeling Pretty pretty decent about this 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 uh, situation, and he kind of has the terror covered with those Onycult Anvil tokens, just jump blocking the terror like if it's mm. nothing. So Mike's gotta yeah Mike's gotta find fables gins. He's gotta get something going. And he thinks the same. He's like, I gotta go consider my options right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, play with fire is okay. Yeah, deals nicely with his harvester here. I think he's gonna opt to get in the oh, two mana terror. You can do one mana terror if you play with fire first. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why he didn't do that. Interesting. Yeah, that would have allowed him to leave up both the essence scatter and still play the terror for one. Um, yeah, but. I also get that his play with fire is, you know, the only current piece of removal in his hand. He maybe wants to be uh, conservative with it. Perhaps, perhaps. So the terror has ward two, but with harvest the sacrifice minus two minus two, pay for the ward, and then vote to search for damage, pay for the wards. So you technically have a six toughness creature beaten. So that's a play Peacemaker could go for. All right, now Two, we see play. Yeah, that's, right that is interesting. I, like, is it activated only as a sorcery for the Harvester? Uh, yes. Okay. Audience. Yeah. Ooh, Fire Seer is pretty nice. Um, am I... Definitely not. Yeah, I think that's going to be really solid. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm cool. Like, I think that's a pretty, pretty good play. Uh, he's going to fading hope the uh, the terror back to his hand and replay it. I think that's probably his best option. Oh, but is I it think... is it only opponents? Mm. No, no, no. But uh, like the problem here is that the damage hasn't resolved from the one one yet, so Mike can just go ahead and bounce the one one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. See, that would have that's that's interesting. That line would have had to happen essentially post combat there to make sure that that damage got in. Mm. Now, to be fair, the fading orb would have saved the, the terror anyhow. Yeah. So wouldn't have worked, but yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good swing. It's a good draw for Peacemaker, but that got Mike a little bit back into this game. Yeah. I think, okay. uh, yeah, if, if I'm uh, Mike, I actually am looking to fires away the 2-2 immediately so that he never has an opportunity to get another artifact. 
Um. Oh, but then you can't kick it. I probably am waiting to kick it, but I still think I'm doing that. Do you think that you're, you attack, he doesn't block, then do you fires or no? I, I like the fires. You have the fading hope, right? So you can bounce a shield rid and then essence scatter it back if, if it, it, like the, in the worst case scenario. So I kind of, I, I think I'm with you. But now that he doesn't have fading hope anymore, he might want to keep up essence scatter. Right, yeah, there, yeah. there is a shield rid. Um, let me just glance over the decklist real quick. Yeah, sure I, I do believe there's at least one, maybe two. He's got yeah, two. there's two shield rid. Yeah. Draws into a one mana five five ward two. Pretty good. <laughs> yep, pretty good. But you know what's also pretty good? A Metoke Massacre for X equals five. No, That's does he have that? He does. Next turn. Oh, he does. If he <laughs> if he plays the well, he drew into two ways to do it. So I guess you gotta play the black. Oh, discard both of those. That would be interesting. But that why? would be a little risky, right? Oh, he discarded the Metoke? Oh <gasps> no. He's oh, thinking. He Hmm. Okay. I think what he's thinking is that it's likely that Mike has a counter spell for the for the seven mana card. Ah, doesn't yes, get, yeah, right. You go like, get, does, doesn't want to get spell pierced like on turn ten or something. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, nothing would feel worse putting seven mana into your me hook massacres against spell pierced. <laughs> uh, keeping the Takanuma for uh Maybe he finds a shield root of that. Mm -hmm. Or at least he's hoping. I mean, it does that, mill sure. three, right? So I, I guess it's a, it's it's a good counter for the essence scatter. If, if Mike's holding up, you know, some kind of counter for shield root, whatever the counter, I get it back with Takanuma. Yeah, true. My uh, Mike is looking like he's pulling further and further ahead here. The slip out the back is going to be really, really good for him. Hmm. I think I'm still slamming a, a terror here. I kind of want to start putting on the pressure and, and give them as few draw steps as possible. Yeah, for okay. sure. I don't know. I don't know why Mike is. Oh, Mike is playing around Mito Master, I guess, is what I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I don't know if I would. I mean, he has to slip out the back as well. I think he has to drop the terror because his late game isn't as good as. As peacemakers, if peacemaker finds reckon a bank buster or experimental synthesizer, um... yeah, and he did. He just drew the bank buster, so it's it's he, the late game is looking in favor for peacemaker. Oh. Yeah, so if I'm I'm Mike, I'm trying to end this game as quickly as possible. So he's going to let his opponent pay for the ward too. And he slips out the back his Talarian Terror to protect it from the Vaulted Surge. And honestly, Mike is doing the right things to put himself in a good position to win. He's going to be able to kick the Fires of Victory to kill the Kiki this turn if he wants it. And uh, I think I'm doing that. I think I'm trying to get rid of Kiki, slamming mm -hmm. my Terror, and then holding up Essence Scatter for the rest of the game. Oh, that could have been it too, right? He could have been holding on to the terror for his cards in hand for uh, the fires. He didn't really um, need three, but he could. That could have been yeah. a consideration. What are your thoughts on fires? I guess my my thought is that it it is a little expensive and slow to be effect that effective in standard. It's a very, I mean, it's it's a unique card. I kind of like it. Like, because on turn two, it's always going to kill your opposing creature, right? It's like oh, yeah. two mana deal five. Mm -hmm. um, and in a late game, it's a lot worse, right? But it, ha it has the kicker as a as an upside, so. That's a good point. That's a good point. I I, I I think I was discounting the fact that, you know, on turn two, it is two, two mana deal five. So that's pretty, it's, you know, way better than... Uh... Oh my gosh, I can't even remember. It's like Ravnica or whatever, the two minute deal four one. That was that was a format all star the whole time it was around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's gonna bother me. I'll find it out. You mean lava coil? Lava coil. Yes, lava yeah. coil is great. 
Yeah, it's a good card. A lava cup is a sorcery, to be fair, though. So. Yep, yep. So that you know, it's another point in favor of fires. Hmm. <laughs> oh, brutal. They... Brutal, they... brutal for both sides because uh, peacemaker is going to go ahead and pay this ward. <laughs> Not going to have anything left for make this appear. Or I guess he does, but uh, see, so one of anything left. Oh, he'll be able to syncopate it. Uh, yeah, syncopate is going to come in here. But really cool game again. Really cool game. Back and forth here. And it also shows you that this is a deck can play well into the late game, even though it stops at free mana. Yeah, one of the things that as I was looking through the is it build was uh I felt like there wasn't enough card draw. Um when you were looking at that, did you did you feel like that it just didn't feel like to me there but it's a tempo deck so maybe i it, there doesn't need to be as much card draw i feel like it would benefit from like one of these bankbusters being in the main board um well you do have consider you do have impulse you do have fable and you play a very very low land count um mm. so i think it's 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 it's, it's like in a, in a decent spot um Ooh, still the away gym. also is card selection yeah yeah exactly he does find the gin uh gonna be able to what is the gin probably like a 10 4 right now this does put peacemaker on like a two turn clock yeah i mean he's got to play it come on mike I, I, yeah I, I think he's thinking about me took but with that make disappear he's good mm -hmm. yeah because he literally would have to tap out to kill the board so he's pretty okay, even against the meat hook. Yeah, this gin. I mean, the terrors they can be chump blocked by the one ones, as we said earlier. But this ter this 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 gin cannot. Um, I will be uh, making short order of peacemaker. He has to find a spot removal asap. I don't know if I, I agree with sacrificing the blood there. I would have just sacrificed the discarding a land, I think, to to try to find a removal for this gin. Yeah, because you really need something to deal with the gin, right? If you don't find something that's essentially game over in two turns. But I guess he's going to have the opportunity to... Playing that as a land was also interesting. Um, yeah, I think maybe holding up... a Killing the 1-1 one -one to give yourself more card selection deeper in your deck may have been more helpful because you can you can infinitely chump block these terrors but this gin is it's a problem mm. yep and mike's sitting on just all these counters like this is a nightmare <laughs> at this point you at this yeah. point, you have to get rid of the Takanuma as well. Yeah, I was gonna say you got you got to toss the Takanuma. You got to keep going. Yeah, I think he's planning for a late game that he doesn't get to unless he gets the removal here. Tossing, I think earlier tossing that meat hook was maybe a little bit of a mistake, just because the meat hook. Actually, to be fair, the meat hook would not deal with it because he would tap out for it, and <laughs> Mike would counter it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at that point, Mike didn't have a counter, but mm. um, he drew it later into it. I mean, it's hard to play against a blue deck full of counter spells and interaction, right? That's mm -hmm. that's so that's that's the nice part about uh, Mike's is a deck. It's just so tricky to play against. They could have so many things at so many times, especially mm -hmm. when they keep up their mana all the time. Oh, and we see the instant morph to the sideboarding screen. So P that means Mike takes game one in the losers bracket semifinals. Uh, definitely interesting matchup. It seems like at this point, they probably know each other's decks pretty well. They played, uh, I believe this is their second match of the day today. Um, so Peacemaker w did walk away from the round robin stages with the first round by and the first seat. So it seems like his aggressive plan probably did pretty well. Now he's got to figure out how can I tech best against each of these matchups? What do you, if you're in Mike's shoes, what are you changing? If I'm in my choose, what am I changing? Um, well, Braid does deal with Onycode Anvil. Um, 
I could see cutting the terror. I mean, it did it did lead to Mike uh, to be the, on the offensive. If he wouldn't have had the terror, he would, maybe would have died just to the one one army. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I think I would cut the Melvin Hermit perhaps. Um, I, I don't see that card doing a whole lot. He's cutting the stowaway. It's a small creature, dies to voltage surge and metok. That makes sense. Mm. I, unfortunately, we can't see how many cards there are left. For second, uh, 15. I think he's got to make cuts right now, yeah. Uh, this looks pretty good to me. Why am I, uh, so if I'm like, why am I including that Rending Flame in there? What am I looking to get with that? It's just for the copies of Shieldred, yeah. Mike is really respecting that card. <laughs> maybe maybe he watched the last match and he was like, eh, I don't want to lose like Peacemaker against Shieldred. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I, I guess I guess he was also losing to Shieldred, wouldn't he? But hey, at least at least the bolt will just have five toughness here, and not six through a wedding invitation. Oh, that's a that's an awkward hand. Ah, you can't you can't toss that, right? You have turn two to turn four, like, and you have double Shieldred. Well. You're running, it's super risky, right? Because you just run them both <laughs> counter spells. And yeah, you you're playing as, as a gin deck. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I would be so tempted to keep that as well. I get, I get why he did that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a keep. It's four lands, three spells. It's, but the anvil doesn't really do anything even because you don't have any artifacts. So, and then your first play is on turn four. That's really not what you, where you want to be against, against this type of deck. What? Well, I was a lucky draw. Uh, but, <laughs> that then, was the best draw in the deck. <laughs> the nice oh, thing God. here, too, is like Mike's actually set up for total failure, right? Because he's got, all right, I get out my gin on turn three, which, you know, maybe you don't want to do, but uh, it's that or nothing. So he gets out his gin on turn three, and then it just leaves you wide open to slam your children. Yeah, then what does he draw? Yeah, he, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he hits plays the gin right now. He might hold up the, the essence scatter. Okay, he's more disciplined than I am. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the gin, you can play the gin on turn four and then have Essence get up. Um, oh, good point. Good point. Yep. Yeah. I wonder. Oh, if, good. I wonder if um, if if Mike regrets his choice of spell peers on the Onicult Anvil. This Onicult Anvil doesn't do anything in itself. And that Fable really, really is, is looking to be winning this game or being at least a huge point in favor of, uh, yeah. It is wild. Like, it, it, I think the reason that it wasn't clear how good it was is because when you read the card, it seems relatively innocuous. You're like, you know what, that's, that's like, nah, it's fine. Not that good. And then you play with it, and you're like, oh my God, this is impressive. <laughs> This is so hard to deal with. Like, cause like what in the first couple of weeks it was like a dollar or two dollars. Now it's like fifteen dollars or whatever. Yeah. Like people just didn't I don't think they knew. I don't think they yeah. understood how how painful it truly was to play against the card. And we completely missed it. I mean, I played that Pro Tour and Neon Neon Dynasty Championship and I, we completely missed that Fable was even good. And we were like one of the top teams with a bunch of MPL and rival players. It's just pff, yeah. I uh I feel like some of the in that championships specifically some of the decks that did well were the people who were early on fable mm, it was like, absolutely oh, yeah like uh I feel jim like davis went like jim's team. At o. yeah jim's team yes. did insane because my buddy was training on jim's team and and they were like oh yeah we we got some techs we like <laughs> we know what's up <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I really like, oh cool it. i can't wait to see it yeah it's it's broken um very yeah. very fun card very good card should make it into your cubes if you have them at home, people. <laughs> mm. And so we see a nice and cheap Talarian Terror coming out for three. Able to hold up his slip out the back, protect his two bombs. And this is going to be a problem for Peacemaker. It looks like Mike is kind of sprinting ahead, even though Peacemaker was able to put on some of the early pressure. Still a good hand. Still, Honestly, it's still anyone's game. Absolutely. The shooter is going to buy... Peacemaker a lot of time. I think 
Um, I must say though, and this Takanuma should have already been played two days, two turns ago. Um, I feel like Peacemaker mm. is clinging to that a lot. Sac sacrifice two treasures for both the shield reds. Those treasures could have come in handy. Um, and the Takanuma, yes. I mean, four mana, that's like, that's not even a spell you put in your limited deck to pay four mana to get a creature <laughs> back. Uh, he, he, sh he shouldn't be so reserved on that. Yeah, it's a, I, I totally get that. And that's interesting, too, because in this, you kind of think, oh, it's treasure, just the mana. But in this deck, it's much more than that. It's like sacrifice fodder for your surges. It's a thing to get your own cold anvil going. Like, you can't really just sack them yeah. willy-nilly. And then wreck to sacrifice. It's it's super low to the ground. Like, only only four mana card is shielded with two copies. Um, but nonetheless, you are happy making your land drop five, six, because there's so much stuff to do, little activities you can, uh, like sacrificing synthesizer or uh, activating bankbuster. You, you you have stuff to do with your mana. So Kiki Jiki is activate only a sorcery? Uh, no, you can activate it at instant speed, but uh, you cannot copy legendary creatures, only non-legendaries. Ah, uh, got it. Got it, got it. What he could do is he could copy his own bankbuster technically after crewing it. Um, and double and block. Jump block with the copy. Okay. Yeah, I could totally see that. That'll be right versus do neither of those. Because he's not going to. I don't he could... know. I was going to say. Think block? Yeah, maybe block, right? You have Takanuma in hand. You're mm. really, but he's also might be trying to. I don't know. I do actually feel like you should have played the Takanuma because now he could have set himself up to at least get rid of the gin. The gin's the, his big problem right now. He's not going to be able to deal with that mm. in, in really at all unless he he can he can use the massacre if he draws him to you know a black and then in two turns he can deal with it, huh? You're, they're both running such limited creature counts that it makes me feel like whoever puts in a little bit more removal just wins the match. Like I think, or I, I think Peacemaker, if Peacemaker adds like out of his sideboard a couple more pieces of removal, like what the heck is is Mike going to do? He's literally running seven creatures in his deck or something, something tiny like that, or like eight. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, for sure. But I think Peacemaker. This list doesn't have that much removal that actually kills these big things. So, but yeah, Mike is just flooding out a bit too much. He didn't draw a fable to cycle away lands. Um, ooh, okay, now we got now we got a way to kill the gin here by copying the harvester. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. But there's a slip of the back coming in now. That's a pretty powerful combo, being able to copy the harvester, get the additional token, sack it immediately. Like that's that's pretty good from Fable. There's so yeah, many absolutely. little things that Fable does the the Kiki, the reflection of Kiki uh does that's that's so powerful, all these little interactions and combos. Yeah, absolutely. The tournament your your buddy was preparing for that one with Jim Davis and so on, mm -hmm. they had of course Grixis and Madu with with Harvester and and mm -hmm. and Kiki. Was, yeah, they were the first. <laughs> There's an impulse. All right, what is this impulse gonna find? Something spicy, hopefully. I mean, impulse has got to be one of the best top techs in the game. I mean, not a chest for recall, but looking at the top four of your best, like that's much much better than just in Rostep. Yeah, right. It's great, especially when you're only paying one for it. Um, unfortunately, I actually think Impulse might be a little better if it were to toss him in the graveyard for you because it's uh, put him at the bottom, right? So, especially in this deck with the gins, that would be pretty sick. That'd be pretty easy if you yeah. just toss them. Some mono blue gin lists nowadays play the, the Midnight, in, I think it's uh, Innistrad Midnight Hunt, uh, common otherworldly gaze. It's like one mana. Oh, look at top four three or something. Yeah, I mean, look at yeah. the top. Yeah, you like scry free, but you surveil free essentially. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. And then it's got flashback too. I remember that one. Yeah, and then you like power out your terrors <clears throat> easily and stuff. Oh, that's that's interesting. Okay, he's got some rough blocks here. Mike is looking to end this with the draw of the second gin. And 
at this point, Peacemaker is praying for a land off the top for a big board wipe. He can he can sacrifice his harvester board wipe. Well, he has the land in hand. He can wipe. Oh, the he board. does. Yeah. Okay. So he can. Yeah. You play Takanuma. You sack the harvester. Uh. Oh, you can't because you can't pay for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, yeah, you can't pay for the ward, but you can sack the harvester on the five toughness, Jin. Then play Meetook. And then kill at least both gins. And then he can sacrifice the blood token with the anvil and have a chump blocker for. But he chooses not to do that. He chooses to copy the harvester. Okay. What is his plan? So he kills one gin. But what does he do about the other gin? Uh, I guess he could play Meetook for one and then sack his harvester to kill the other gin. Finally, Takanuma hits the battlefield. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that he's thinking I'm going to play Shouldred, sacrifice a blood token, tossing up Nixilis, gaining mm. two life. I get a mm. blocker for the scholar. Uh, well, but he's still, that's still a lethal. That's still lethal for him because I think the gins is seven. Yeah, it's exactly seven. Oh, and he gets to gain one. Oh, he gains Polygon. one. So, so if, he's at if, one. <laughs> but Mike draws a spell, it's over. At least if it's fell, he's he can cast. Yeah, sacking the bankbuster's gotta feel feel rough. Um, but I think what he could have done is he could have cycled the blood token, then he gets the construct, and then he can sack the construct, and then he still think, keeps around the, the harvester. Uh, the, the, the bankbuster. He has to attack too, right? Oh, okay. I think he had to attack because that uh, that's game. Um, just because that would have been lethal. I think uh, next turn that would be lethal. You block mm, and then mm. you get to swing for five, six, Oni Colt, seven, and then uh, maybe you play up next list, sack the. You can't sack the, or I guess you could copy the one one token. Yeah, that was that yeah, was yeah. tough. There was a lot of that would have been a close game no matter what. That was a ton of fun to watch. Uh, so okay, let's take a quick peek at where that puts us. So poor Peacemaker after, congratulations, Mike, he's moving on to the next round. Uh, yeah, the last game was super duper sick. Uh, after Peacemaker coming through the round robin stage, uh, clean undefeated, he now falls in the double elimination stage of our tournament. So we have Matteo taking our Esper mid range list, taking on Mike, our blue red tempo list. So let's take a peek at these. So we were just talking about this one, the eight creatures, the hottie gins, the terrors, lots and lots of instant speed interaction, ways to protect his big creatures, counter spells to deal with opponents threats. There may have been a line there at the end for the boy wheat, a really, really close matchup. That was a, that was a tough one in general, um, but a ton of fun to watch. Uh, so now we have this, this, Matteo's Esper deck here has been doing doing work against some of these others, but Mike has been playing tight, and I'm excited to see the rest of this matchup. Um, we yeah. So while these guys get set up, uh, you, Tyler, Arnie, we're gonna take a, like a two minute break. I'm just gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Um, this is recording, so we'll be able to edit this out later. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 totally yeah, yeah, we're not streaming. So <laughs> I, you can go to the bathroom too. Let's do like a two-minute break, and then we'll come back and, and do the games. Okay. Talk to you soon. All right, we're back into the bracket here with the boys. Very interesting wrinkle in today's drama of our tournament. Peacemaker actually 2 owed Mike in the round-robin stages. And then, wait, no, no, no. Is that right? Yes, then Mike comes back to 2-0 Peacemaker in the bracket. So a lot of fun. These guys have been duking it out all day. We're into the finals of the bracket. We have Matteo with his Esper mid-range build taking on Mike with the blue-red tempo. Arnie, who do you think is going to win? Um, <laughs> I actually, I mean, this is Which deck do you like better? Let's not, let's not go by person. Which deck do you think stacks up better against the other? Uh, um... I think the person who's on the play is going to win. Well, I'm going to say that. <laughs> and otherwise, I mean, standard is right now really a, uh, on the play format. Um, and otherwise, I would say, uh, I like, oh, I mean, I like both decks. We got this Esper list with Rite of Oblivion as the spice, mm -hmm. the token theme. Really like that innovation. And on the other hand, we have 
I mean, a blue red tempo deck? Are you kidding me? I'm I'm the Splinter Twin player. I'm the blue red Rogues player. I love <laughs> those type of decks more than anything else. So I I guess uh, deck wise, I gotta definitely go with Mike here, and I'm. I'm hoping for the Brothers War, honestly, to give us some more goodies for that archetype. Then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think lovely. that we have a fun matchup here. I think both these guys have been piloting these decks at expert quality, and I'm excited to see them duke it out. They probably know these decks, these builds better than anyone else. We've been seeing yeah. some some great plays, some fun matchups. I'm excited to see these guys duke they, it out they... and, and see if Mike can uh, win two in a row. And we're actually heading into Mulligans now. We... Uh, have the ability oops sorry about that my screen got a little messed up for my share i'm not sure what happened um but yeah we are in the we match. got a we got a good hand here from uh from matteo four lands free spells easy peasy easy keep looks like matteo is on a play as well and we got a mulligan here on mike's side with uh, oof, mike okay so we got matteo on the play with a seven keep and mike on the draw with a oh null. never mind uh, mike is on a play here actually got it Okay, so how much how much does that mitigate your whatever fifty two to forty eight advantage on the play when you mull? Is it then kind of clean fifty fifty? Are you are you way are you a little disadvantaged at that point? Uh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you ask <asking> questions here. <laughs> um, I, I I I don't know. I I, I want to see. I don't think I have a good answer for that. Um. It's, That's okay. A calculator probably knows that better than you do. <laughs> yeah, I think on the on the six. I mean. Maybe on average you're still ahead, yeah. But it's it's probably it's probably pretty fair. Maybe that's maybe you should make that a rule, huh? <laughs> you mullet you are on six cards when you're on the play. I don't know. Um Mike That's super interesting. Impulse. Yeah, well, I guess hmm. if both players drew turn one, being on the play, I could see taking six being okay. Oh boy, that'd be hard. I wonder. I wonder what they could do that could mitigate that on the play advantage, though, because I do agree that that's challenging when formats are dominated by aggressive decks where being on the play makes such a substantial difference. Yeah. Um, okay. Double gin in hand for Mike. I like that. Hmm. Mike a few answers from Matteo. Hmm. Mike looking for another land here to safely deploy a gin. And uh, have that counter spell or fading orb up. And yeah, I mean, well, first of all, these two players should already be proud of each other uh, for making the finals here at this tournament. Mm -hmm. And I'm surely proud of them, uh, my my students for the, my esporter students here for the last four weeks. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be working with them and seeing their enthusiasm. And yeah, I gotta say, I mean, they 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 really. They've shown um, what they're capable of, and here we get a Jin hitting the battlefield. Yeah, a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of a lot of grit for these guys to tough it out through several rounds of of tough play today. It's been a ton of fun to watch. Ooh, and uh, Matteo here going for the I don't give an f shouldered, no fear. <laughs> Boom. Make this I, appear. I think that was probably a, I forgot there was a cost reduction on the gin, and I thought it was that was clean there. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to ask him afterwards, though. Yeah, it could have been, could have been. Oh, the gins are just two fours for now, so they're very small. Giving Matteo time. Yeah, a little bit of an opportunity here to activate Bankbuster if he wants to try and find some answers. Uh, I'm not sure. For board wipes, what Matteo's running? He's got a single meat hook, and then he's got the triple right of oblivion, infernal grasp, destroy evil. All those deal with gin pretty nicely. Uh, inputs the perfect top deck here to to make these gins bigger and find yeah. you a nice spell. I mean, Mike's Mike's in a driver's seat. Double gin. Attacking here. Whew. Yeah, this is a big problem. So he put land to Larian Terror. Oh, keeps in a gate. Pretty good. All these single blue mana counter spells. Turns out it's pretty good. Yeah. Could have even considered to bounce the, the token there, honestly, because then you would have had eight damage and your opponent's at 16. So that is uh 
you know, eight plus eight equals sixteen. I mean, this is lethal. Next year, he's probably gonna. I wouldn't be surprised if Matthew goes to double spell. He gets to negate the wedding announcement. He fading hopes a token, and there you go. That's game. Yeah. Wow, real clinical execution here from Mike. Got a little lucky, double double haughty gin, but I think he's going to be set up to close this one out. Yeah. Slip out the back on an opposing creature might come in uh, here to go for the lethal. <laughs> Just to get a spell in the graveyard. Interesting uh, fading hope on Adeline there. What do you think? Why do you think he chose that there? Uh, I mean, I think Mike is kind of like in a position where he doesn't care. On, like he just wanted to to have Matthias spend the most mana, and he didn't want to have him uh, get the one one. So he did it at the beginning of combat. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's what he was planning to do there. Yeah, Which makes, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Matteo could choose to. I mean, Matteo is probably hoping that Mike just has two lands here, and then. Um, yeah, maybe play a vetting announcement and just hope to race Mike. Okay. Interesting choice to play nothing. Well, he does get rewarded, draws into a cycling land. Oh, and there it is. That's going to be lethal for yeah. Mike. Yeah, there's no no opportunity for Matteo to answer these du dual attacking <laughs> gins in the air. So game one's going to go to Mike, and Mike actually needs to now win two best of three matches in order to overtake Matteo in the standings. So this is a good start for him and his his run at glory and victory here in the East Border Standard Constructed Arnie Houston Bet Dominary United Championship. <laughs> that was the most simple name I ever put down. My goodness. Um, yeah, I mean that's 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 the thing here because because Matteo clinched this the top spot and uh, worked and won a lot. He actually only has to win one match against Mike, but Mike has to win two. It's exactly how they structure the the recent uh, championships. The, the pro tours um, of the online past. And we here we have the same system. And there's a play of fire for Lifo. I actually didn't know that they had changed to that. I, I was under, I didn't know that the final bracket when it was, is that when it cuts to the top eight, it's double elimination? Um, yeah, it's it's when when it cuts to the top eight, it's it's a, it's a similar bracket system where, where there's a losers and a winners bracket. And then the winners bracket, when he gets to the finals, um, has a match advantage on the mm. opponent. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then it's best of three matches. That's cool. Yeah, so we're going to get to see Mike's sideboard here. He's, uh, when you're thinking about that mid range build, what am I really interested here? I think, what do we not need? Better question is like, what are you cutting? Yeah, I, I like spell peers, I think. I mean, I, yeah, the play with fire and the braids are getting cut. They don't have great targets. That's that's definitely happening. And then, I mean, yeah, it's uh, Rafine, Adeline, Shieldred, other creatures. So you want some essence scatters for those. What is the um, Pything Needle for? The Pything Needle is a good counter for like uh, Planeswalkers, right? Yes, Liliana of the Veil. Mm -hmm. Um posing reckoner bank busters you can name sometimes mm -hmm. doesn't come in handy in this matchup but we see the reckoner bank buster we don't see it in the sideboard anymore i don't see it in the main deck either but uh, i mean the, the arena interface probably has it hidden under the fires of victory mm -hmm. so mike choosing to to go a little bit grindier which which does make sense so it's a grindy mid-range matchup yeah my thought actually was also cutting one of the uh the negates just because you know that he's got a lot of flashback you got here if it doesn't exile then you know you one for oneing his two for one spell doesn't do that much to help and i think he just needs to to win early like he needs to get a little lucky he needs to to try and win this magic really it's a good opening hand for matteo here oh great opening hand here for Mike as well. Yeah, a little bit, probably better for Mike than it is for Matteo, but definitely not a bad one for Matteo at all. Absolutely. And a consider off the top to get this tarot going. 
Uh, uh. Getting out the reinforcements before open blue mana uh, comes back on Mike's turn. I think he put a spell in his graveyard trying to fill it up a little bit more. Yep. Terror. No, actually, Terror just cost six. So okay. there wasn't, there was something different. Maybe a creature. But what creature oh, are you yeah. putting in? Stowaway? In? in the graveyard? Mm, I mean, you, I don't know. <laughs> you already have a Fable and a Terror. So I want to know now. Now I want to know. <laughs> This guy's keeping up a blistering pace of play. Mike opting not to play the turn three fable to hold up the essence scatter or spell pierce. I like it, but little does he know, Matteo has nothing to do. <laughs> well, but Matteo has the answers for the fable, so that's true. That's true. Playing around that is definitely. Do you so when you have the second fable at hand, is there a world where you're just running head first in the first one into the first answer for my the fable? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then Mike Brutal. is going for that here. Nothing feels worse than the spell beers. <laughs> mm, yeah. All right, Matteo is... Uh, ooh, I think that was maybe a bit of a hasty cast of his reinforcements. No no need to do that. Oh, he's got another land in him. Uh, oh, he was going to his turn. Excuse me. Duh. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, that was, uh, yeah, yeah. That was all the right play. The bank bus. I was about to say that uh, Matthias is running out of gas, but the bank buster off the top's got to be the absolute best top deck here. I mean, it's you empty handed. Activated this turn. Yeah. yeah. He gets to hold up, make disappear. He's he's looking pretty good. Matteo might be able to escape here with a W. And it, it's so interesting because Mike's hand, for all intents and purposes, looked pretty dang good. Yeah. Mike is kind of like the in the controlling defense position here. We're facing eight uh, four power, facing the bankbuster. Just gets the, I think I make disappear this pretty comfortably, and and then start drawing yep. on the following turn. Absolutely. Get get in with your with your one ones and just be the aggressor here. It's it's flipped it's flipped um, roles right now. Oh, Matteo, you really really. Oh, I don't know. Like he's thinking Ottawaro, right? He's thinking I can, oh, whatever. I can bounce the token. I'll save to make this appear for something more important. I draw a card. Yeah, and no, but four mana. He can Ottawaro and uh, look, look, he can counter that attack and then Ottawaro the next thing. And now he's kind of priced into Ottawaroing main phase. Uh, I. I see what he's trying to do there, but I don't think it's. Uh, but, I it. but I hate it. But I hate it. No, no, no. It's, I, I totally get what you're saying, right? Because now he is kind of, his hand is almost even shown to Mike. Like, oh, okay, like he had an opportunity to to do something, right? So he maybe mm -hmm. has the counter in hand. It's tough. These arena tells are tough. Um, but it could but be anything, right? To be fair, I guess what Matteo was ahead on us was that the spell pierce, if he counters with make disappear, he runs into spell pierce. And Mike does have the spell pierce. So maybe Matteo is just uh, one, one step ahead on me here or on us. Hmm. So he would have run into that spell pierce. And he, at this point in the late game, you kind of don't want to give your opponent. Uh, what's, the what's the crew on Bankbuster? Is it is it three? Yes. Okay. I was gonna say, like, is it is it worth crew in the bankbuster and trying to push a little? I I just feel like you're so close to like you really want to push damage mm. if possible, but maybe that's too hasty. Mm. I also I must I must say these players are too peacemaker in the last round and now again Matthew. I think I would have played this Otavara. They, they, they're too um they want to keep those lands in hand. I, you have the bank buster that you want to activate, and you're likely also going to use your make disappear. So I think you just played out of our there. Mm -hmm. Or at least what you should do, I think, is draw with your bank buster. And then if you draw an untapped land, you can just play that. But if you mm -hmm. don't, you just play out of our. That makes sense. Yeah, this is this is where I get a little scared of of Mike of starting to give him these <clears throat> give him these artifacts to start to mm -hmm. turbo out some of his cards. Oof, that's gonna be tough. It's gonna eat the rending flame. Yeah, well, rending I guess, flame. I guess. Well, he can't even. He can still make disappear, and then he's still left 
with two mana. So what, what Matteo can do, which I think he should do, is he should sack a creature here. Yeah. So so he's able to, yeah, he's going smart. to do that. That's smart. Even though, oh yeah, he has to actually, because this, yeah, no, never mind. I think if, if, if um, sorry, if, if Mike only had one mana up here, he sh still should have done that. Because if he only does it for one, then Mike can just spell Pierce and then the bank buster still dies. But now uh, he can't spell Pierce back. Mike maybe should slip out the back the two two. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's fine. Maybe you can just let it go. That was a that was a good turn for Matteo for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was uh, because yeah, if he spends the one on the spell pierce, he still has to pay the two for the other copy. That was what I was walk working through before you came on. I saw that same interaction happen. I was like, oh yeah, you have to counter two copies of that spell. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was a great play from Matteo. He's, he's protecting his most valuable resource on the battlefield right now, which is his bank buster. He is able to get into another land, which is great. Draw some more cards and leave up a counter. No one ever got mad about another reinforcements. All right, this is going to allow him to cast his, his terror next turn for very cheap. He's got the spell pierce in hand. Yeah, resident reinforcements slowly but surely grinding on a life total while also providing one ones to sacrifice into make this appear. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, like, whatever Mike is going to play here, it's going to get countered. And he can't do nothing about it. Oh, interesting question. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a world where you let it resolve to bounce it with uh, Atawara, but then, you know, there's slip out the back and there's too many other options. And I yeah. think that Chid is dangerous enough that you don't want him to ever have access to it. Absolutely. Next turn, he's going to have five damage, getting out a reinforcements, crewing the bank buster. Once the last counter comes off the bank buster, what happens to it again? Does it become a creature? It makes a one one that can a pilot that can crew. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it makes a treasure as well. Got it. Oh man. I, I wonder if you, he should have essence scattered there because I mean he's at nine. This is this is getting a bit out of hand with these one ones. Okay, it's getting close. Adawara is going to be able to bounce whatever he plays next turn, and he's going to be able to cast the reinforcements. Yeah. It's looking pretty good for Matteo. Interesting play to draw here. I don't think that was maybe necessary. Void Run's a pretty good pickup, though. Um, that's just exile non-land permanent. Do you know what it is? Uh, it's destroy target non-land permanent, and yeah. it can't be countered. And Ward that's also counters, so it goes around Ward. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't go around slip out the back. I mean, that one. Yep. Well, slip, unfortunately. Oh, it's until <clears throat> next end step. So it will come back. Okay. With a 1-1 one -one counter. Yeah, but I mean, we see five power on the battlefield. There's another resolute reinforcements coming in here. Oh, um, interesting. I don't know if I would have gotten that right in the client. I don't know if, because you have to <laughs> decline it and then, oh, wow. No, I totally would have messed that up. <laughs> I did not know that was how Void Run worked with Ward. I 100%. That's a, that's a challenging interaction. So you have to just realize that, oh, no, no, no it's going to be fine because it can't be countered. So I can decline to pay and then let it resolve. Boy, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you're Mike, you got to essence scatter this one. Uh, yes, but it's still lethal with five power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sees it and he says, okay, okay, that's enough. So I thought that it would phase back in at the beginning of the next end step. Is it the, is the next? Um, it phases in, in your own upkeep essentially or untap ah, step. That's whenever if, if permanent of yours phases back into play. Yeah. 
Oh, interesting. So yeah, it's gone until your next turn, essentially. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, Matteo here on the play. Um, really switching roles here, being the the aggressive, low to the ground, flashy deck with make disappears to counter the clunky blue red deck with its free drops. I mean, <laughs> all right. So Matteo sees sees the finish line. He sees the light at the end of the tunnel. If he's able to make a couple of decent changes here, he's going to be set up for success. He, it seems like he took out some of his right of oblivions. I guess yeah. it's a little less good when you're dealing with a, a low creature count opponent. I don't know. I mean, I I would I would think that right of oblivion is very good because like, the, yes, of course he has low creature count, but he has a lot of protection and counter spells. So having that removal, that's basically a removal in like one card and two removals. Yep. So I don't know about that. Interesting, interesting choice. Yeah, I agree. I'm not, I'm not positive, but then again, you know, these guys have been piloting the stuff pretty yeah, well absolutely. all day. So I think that they have some good stuff figured out. Um, but yeah, I think that there's definitely other considerations that could be made. Um, interesting keep from Matteo here. It seems like this is going to be a bit of a slower keep and more of a controlling keep. And Mike draws into a gym. Really, really good pick up there. Yeah, I mean, Matteo has a really good hand here on the draw. He's got all angles covered. And that's, this is kind of where you want to be on the draw on uh, in, the, in the standard format. Cheap interaction, especially make disappear is excellent on the draw because it catches those powerful free drops. And um, yeah, yeah. Mike is saying nope. I will, I refuse to be gotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike just wants to fill his graveyard, make some land drops, find some counter magic, some protection. Just looking to get set up. That makes sense. If I'm Mike here, I would pass. I think another time. Um, not play the gin because at this point you can play around, make this appear, right? You can just cast the gin on five. Mm -hmm. Matteo does have the answer for either creature in Mike's hand at the moment. But Mike does have the answer for Matias Shuldred. Hmm. A little bit of a staring match. Right now. No, you go. I like it. Go. I like it. It's 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 really what happened in standard lately with make disappear around because you just want to make land drops to to have that card become dead. Mm -hmm. And Matteo doesn't have anything going on. All these considers coming in handy for Mike. Mm. but yeah ultimately the draw go plan is probably going to favor Matteo because he does have the more powerful deck mm -hmm. Mike getting a lot of his threats though if he can get even a 3-4 Jin on board it's a pretty big game mm -hmm. I think I'm leading with the fable though yeah absolutely that's tough though because you know not knowing what's in Matteo's hand that puts me in a position to say oh like maybe I toss this rending flame which is kind of like to to power out my terror like oh maybe I don't need this just yet like and it's his only copy to deal with the children in Matteo's hand hmm. I think I think Mike is going to be conservative on that he knows he knows about the shield all right so what do you toss what do you toss in this do you toss anything in, I don't the... know hmm stuff i mean you gotta see the draw step but like what is the decision here for for matteo is he gonna yeah i was about to say i, I like this i like this using both counter spells to first tap tap uh mike low mm -hmm. and also i mean yeah spell pierce and make disappear they just don't hit much with six lands in place so you just got to use them both on a spell and mm -hmm. here mike gives you the opportunity i mean mike is probably happy with that too it's a two for one so yeah, works for both. <laughs> Everyone's like fair trade. <laughs> Quasar is uh, interesting. Yeah, obscure interceptor. Oh, that's uh, what I meant. Not Quasar, obscure interceptor. Uh, she's a, like a counterspell, right? 
yeah it's sort of like a mystic snake variant mm-hmm. um and here we see shieldred hitting the battlefield but mike has to stop at the ready to not take any damage here i'm just gonna rending flame although he could also wait honestly like what if he draws a land then he could drop both gins and then still rending flame for one mana and he's a 20 he can take the two i think i lean towards waiting and just taking two damage honestly mm-hmm. Although I must say, if he does that, he might have gotten blown up by Inferno Grasp. So, in hindsight, or knowing both players' hands, um, Mike, probably the right play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mike went with the right play there. And here, Mike also plays again around Make Disappear. Very nice, very well played. Not deploying a Jin because it would have gotten countered by Make Disappear. Yeah, that's definitely one that. I feel like that would have needed to be like that interaction through the interface would have needed to be explained to me in order for me to oh. actually understand it. And go, no, yeah, you yeah. decline that, then you can let it resolve. It's tricky. I ran into that as well. Okay, so that's also I feel like that's another arena tell of like how quickly the creature goes onto mm. the battlefield. Like there's no pause because your opponent has nothing to do. It's like, okay, I'm 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 good. Mm. Oh, okay. Here we go. We got a negate in hand to get rid of the bank buster. Mm. The grass to clear out one of the gins. And then I think Matteo's kind of in the driver's seat. Yeah. Matteo oh, also has like Ganjo. Even, yeah, he's even got a Ganjo to deal with it. Wow. Mm. I honestly, I lean towards playing my land here and just using my Ganjo. But... He, he wants to kill it now. I guess the thought is, hey, oh, well, it's a channel, right? So you can't even, it's not even casting a spell. Yeah, yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. Does it get around every counter? Except like that disallow. Um, <laughs> it doesn't get around slip out the back, and there's no disallow in the format. So, or like, at least, but the problem is, imagine if, um, if Mike had slip out the back there, then he would have had a five toughness creature. Mm-hmm. So you want to be the first. First, you want to use a Ganjo to play around slip on the back. Technically, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Okay. And this game again is super tight. I mean, they're both low on resources now. Mm-hmm. He does have but... the cycle land and a way mm-hmm. to get rid of the gin. Ooh. Well, that's a victory. Looking good. Killing the free one. Drawing a card next turn. These games int- have been great, I must say. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. They have been great. I was going to say, it's going to be interesting to see if he takes the bait here on the attack. Oh, he, he does. Okay, you got the Iconjo. Yeah, that's... Uh, I guess he's playing around Wandering Emperor with the Fires of Victory in hand, so he doesn't worry about the Planeswalker with the first strike coming in because he can blow out the creature in response. But yeah, Iconjo gets him here. Still holding hmm. up the mana to cycle the land. Matteo looks like he might be in a good position here unless Mike can get something going with the, some of these draw steps. He is, the fire's still, you know, like you said, even late game, the one damage here does something for him. Oh, a fable. a fable. He can cast both if he draws a land. Even if he doesn't draw land, he has Adawaro. Um, so he can cast it all. I would rather hang on to Ottawa and try and toss it to st- number two on Kiki Jiki Day. Yeah, I, I do agree. And here we see Fires of Victory being your two mana removal that can also just be kicked and draw a card. That's pretty good. I think I like this from Mike. That's, that's, oh, he chooses not to play. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, but I do have to say, if you play the mountain there, that's like you want to either play the fable there, then if you play the mountain, or you want to keep the mountain in hand for the fable chapter two. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. If you're not going to play it, then there's no real reason to, if you're to play out that land. Um, It's more valuable as a potential spell down the line. Yeah. 
But I, I mean, I, I sorry, I, I might be a little harsh with the players here. I mean, I see everything. I'm, I'm awake. I'm, I'm, I have eaten, and they probably <laughs> played the tournament for five rounds. It's, uh, they're doing a great job. I must say, mm -hmm. really, really want to point that out. That both Matteo and 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 Mike have played really well Magic. Um, so I mean, those, uh, yeah, just really, uh, these games have been great to watch. Yeah, it's been a ton of fun. These guys are pretty deep in it, so I can imagine they're feeling a little bit tired at this point. Uh, so he's going to be able to get back his children if that's what he chooses, and he does. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. Is it children yet again taking it home here? It might be. Like I can't imagine. I mean, we need, of course, the perfect information is always always uh, a little bit yeah. unfair, but seeing what's going on, we could be in in trouble. Or, or Mike could be in trouble. He lost his rending flame already. Yeah, he used it. Or wait, wait where did he it go? Did, yeah. yeah, he used it. Yeah. He's got to find, I don't know, Syncopate, Essence Scatter. Mm -hmm. well, he's got to find it now. All right, okay, ditch those two. He finds him ah! disappear. Okay. Uh, uh, it does it though. It does it. Uh, oh, unless unless Matteo plays the land. Let's see if yes. he has the forethought to play the land. Unless he plays the land. If he doesn't play the land, though, I feel like I'm whispering. <laughs> okay, ah! he sees it. He sees it. Charles Children's about to take over. Oh. No, I, I, I mean, I'm rooting for Matteo too, but I would have loved to see another match that we could watch here. With the two I know, right? This... It's, it's also hard not to root against children. <laughs> oh, no. She's such a bully. Disappear. Yeah, she's like... Uh... But there's another make disappear. So if you would have drawn that one turn earlier, it would have been... Uh, yeah, he could have at least counted the children, but now... This has been fun to watch, though. These guys have been absolutely killing it. Wow, it's a good draw for Matteo being able to get rid of the reflection there. Yeah, it's been really fun to watch. Yeah, dang. Wow. I, I, this has been crazy. I honestly don't know. I can't think of a line that I really would have done differently. You know, maybe that small line where Mike had hung onto that mountain, he wouldn't have had to toss the negate which would have allowed him to do what not really a whole lot yeah i'm trying to figure out like where mike could have could have won in the past you know six or seven turns or like had a better outcome and i feel like he navigated it pretty pretty deftly like he did a good job yeah i, I yeah i think mike played this game really really tight um mm -hmm. both played it really really well and Mike, especially playing around those make disappears, sometimes it looked like Mike had perfect information, right? How he was playing around everything in, in Matteo's hand. But Matteo just, uh, in the end, the Takanuma off the top and for the Shieldred and Mike having some poor top decks there with make disappear. I think this is one of the and, fun things about these types of tournaments too, is like, you know, Matteo and zero wins was the lowest seed coming into the double elimination and it's just like okay just keep you know going through your progressions going through your game plan like you know anyone can win on any given day especially if you're all playing pretty tight so it's been a ton of fun to watch these guys duke it out and you know again an honor to host them and have the, you here commentating with us we always appreciate it and it's been just a really really fun experience to kind of go through all this with you absolutely i really enjoyed it too can the gin the gin gets to trade with children but... and it gets copied actually is this going to be the <laughs> what we need it here because kiki copying the gin oh my god oh it's probably like it's probably like a seven or eight it's probably not even like a, uh we'll see we'll see oh but you're right you can you can do it on blocks okay yeah so you, you get can to block with it yeah yeah so he blocks one takes Oh, he gets to block one of the one ones. He go down some one, this other one. Oh no, the trespasser trigger kills him. Actually, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably get the gain drain on the trespasser. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, man, that was almost a comeback. It's a ten four. Damn. So oh, <laughs> ten four is pretty good. Oh, look at what funny. Mike is doing here. Mike is throwing some make disappears. 
add the gin to make it even bigger. Twelve. He he he. Okay. So he he, he refuses. He doesn't pay. Oh, he needs he needs to be able to attack with both though. Dang! I love, wow. I, I love this play. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So he's countering his own mate disappear, so protecting his gin essentially. <laughs> oh, I mean, and putting two spells in the graveyard. Um, but it's not enough. It's just not enough. That is. Well, maybe Matteo doesn't attack with the one once. Maybe Matteo is tired, doesn't see the line. Who knows? Yeah, there's always a chance, right? You always you want to respect your opponents and you know assume they aren't idiots, but you always want to make them have it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Matteo is getting in there. <laughs> no, one misclick away, but he finds that creature, and that is the trophy for Matteo. That is the game. It's gonna be able to double block. Wait, wait, wait. is it? Can he double yeah. block? Yeah, he blocks two creatures and then he he dies to two. The, no, the, the thing is, he dies to the shield. Oh, never mind. Right. I don't think it's done yet. Shield. I don't think oh, it's done yeah, yet. Yeah, you're totally right. I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I was looking at I was yeah. like, is it lethal? Wait a second. I, I thought that the shield root is, um, you know, uh, draining for two, but it's actually not here. All right, so Mike unfortunately has to if he uh, tries to go for it right now, so he gets the spiel, spell pierce and can't get the spell pierce in. It's so, just twenty four damage. Oh uh, my is, god, <laughs> Mike's got to be like, are you kidding me? It's just one one short. If Mike would have drawn a spell, he would have won. Well, and, without shieldred, he can still cast spell pierce. Oh, it's not creature. Never mind. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's still not over, right? Wait, 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 wait. It's not over, right? Is it over? He can still block. Well, he has four one ones and he has two blockers. A buddy, oh, because he makes a copy, taps him down. Wow. Oh, what yeah. a match, boys. What a Oh match. my god. That, that was, was a roller coaster. That was a ton of fun to watch. Well, congratulations to Matteo for taking it all down. Wow. Yes, we have to give a huge congratulations to Matteo and his Esper mid-range piloting it like an absolute champ. That was a ton of fun to watch. Holy crap, Shildred is a $51 card. I was not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. he, he came in here and absolutely dominated the competition after a really rough round robin stage. You can see Matteo came in as the third seed, the bottom player here and was able to pilot uh, his deck to ultimate victory uh we, you know we are super excited to have had <clears throat> all these awesome players come in and play with us and to yeah. learn from arnie uh i think we're going to be able to get um honestly Ma matteo yeah. in here for a second to talk to him about the w absolutely amazing stuff He's gonna be super excited. I can I can just uh, tell now. He's probably real juiced up after a four hour tournament. He's gonna to be really excited about that W. Yeah, yeah. He, he should be proud of himself. I mean, that was excellent gameplay. Great deck choice. Tuned this Esper list to perfection. I mean, not to perfection, maybe, but in, into something that that worked. Yeah. So really cool stuff. And I'm proud of them. I'm proud of both of them. I, they played really well, Magic. Um, yeah, that was that was that was definitely a great great time, and, and kind of seeing them <clears throat> perform as well as they did, it was really, really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a great deck list here. We'll make sure that we share this out to everybody so that you can also copy this deck, test it on the ladder if you want to check out what these guys were working with. Um, all right, I'm here with the champion, Matteo. Congrats on taking it all down. That's awesome. You took it. All down with a spicy Esper Brewski of yourself with the <laughs> right of oblivion, resolute reinforcement, make this appear package. Um, exactly. <laughs> how are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm a little bit exhausted. I didn't realize that this match is could be so intense and very, very hard. But uh, yes. Yes, I did it, and uh, I'm happy for, because it was very, it, there was very good matches and not easy at all to to win. Yeah, absolutely. You guys, you guys threw uh, at each other everything you had, and the top decks were coming in as well. I mean, it was amazing to watch, and um, I, it must have been stressful and like uh, yeah, draining to to play. What what time is it for you right now? 
Uh, it's uh, eleven thirty-eight. Eleven thirty-eight. I mean, it's also late at night, so uh, yeah, even exactly. like, even stronger to to be still at that level and um, still be still be uh, making those yeah. great plays. Oh uh, yeah, how focus and to be, because I had also the decklist of my opponents in another. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, I was thinking, well, can they can they have this card? Can they have this card? So <laughs> thinking about all decisions. All right, maybe awesome. it will be easier not having the de open deck because <laughs> you you think a little bit less, but yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess you could say that a little bit less. Uh, <laughs> the multitasking and stuff definitely um, gets gets to you. Yeah, how do you feel about your Esper list? Um, are you going to make changes going forward? Mm, are you happy with I, it? I, I don't know. Mm, I tried. I already tried it on ladder. It was okay, around sixty uh, percent win rate, so totally acceptable. And uh, maybe yes, I can make a, a few changes to make it better. I think uh, actually I'm not an expert for such sideboardings, and maybe yes, uh, it's possible to make make a better better builds on better card choices. But I think it was fine la as it is. So all right, sweet. <laughs> um... I mean, yeah, I, I know from from playing to notes myself. There's always a little tweak, some some something that maybe wasn't quite right at the seventy five, and you want to change. Um, yeah, maybe <laughs> my side yeah. was was we well, not right because yes, but uh, yes, maybe you 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 will tell me. All right, beautiful. If you want to participate in something like this, if you want to be a part of four weeks of coaching with professionals like Arnie freaking Husenbet, four weeks of group coaching, scrimmages in-game reviews, feedback sessions, group pod play that all culminate in a championship tour tournament for prizes. Come join us at esporter.win. Uh, hey, Arnie, before we head out, what is what do you think about this type of structured learning? Like, what do you think about like this group setting, kind of being in this community? How do you, what do you think about kind of the esporter experience? Um, I absolutely love the idea of, of getting like-minded people together, especially on the internet. There's so many, I mean, from places, we have Matteo from Italy, we have people in the United States, we get together online, have like-minded players that want to get better at the game, that can can find each other and then work even after the eSport experience uh, together to, to, to prepare for online arena tournaments or Magic Online, what have you. Just the connection that is being made and then also, yeah, you you get for for a very good price. You get a great package of coaching lessons with high level uh, players, and um, at the at the very end, you even get a tournament to play for. I, I absolutely love it. It's it's a great idea, and uh, I'm happy to have um, done this with you here. Well, Arnie, we can't thank you enough. Uh, I mean, you've been such a great coach for us. I know everyone in your split really enjoyed their time with you. So I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you for coming on and casting uh, the final bits of this tournament. Uh, congratulations to all our participants. And again, if you want to come join us for our next split, come check us out and uh, we'll get you in and see you in the next one. Thanks, Arnie. Peace out. See ya.